Okay, guys, so a truck is traveling with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second on a slippery road. The driver slams on the brakes and the truck starts to skid. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road is 0.2, how far will the truck skid before stopping? So we will need to find the delta x, the stopping distance. In this picture, we see that the initial velocity is 20 meters per second to the right. But when the wheels are locked, the kinetic friction force is in the opposite direction. So this unbalanced force is going to decrease the velocity of this truck until it gets to zero, because this truck is going to stop. Now, this is the picture that includes the normal force that, that's going upwards and the mg that's going downwards. But notice that both have the same magnitude, but they are in opposite direction. This happens because we assume that the road is flat. There is no slope. So for this special case, fn is equal and opposite to mg. I took the velocity out of this picture because the free body diagram only includes forces and velocity is not a force. So now we go from the picture to the actual diagram. Remember that the kinetic friction force is defined as mu k, that's the kinetic friction constant, times fn, that's the normal force. For this case, mu k is equal to 0.2. So first, we're going to do the summation of the forces in the y direction, and we notice that the truck is not accelerating upwards or downwards, because it is on a flat surface. So the summation of the forces in the y direction has to be zero, and the forces that we have in the y are fn minus mg, because mg is going downwards. So we say that zero is equal to fn minus mg, and we can conclude that for this specific case, fn is equal to mg. Now I place this result to the right hand side in the green square, and we are going to do the summation of the forces in the x direction. We see that the only force that we have in this case is the kinetic friction force to the left. But notice that this is an unbalanced force because we don't have any other force to the right. So the kinetic friction force is the unbalanced force that's going to stop this truck. For that reason, the summation of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration. But let's replace the kinetic friction force for the mu k times fn. But also remember that fn is equal to mg. So instead of fn, I'm going to plug mg. We can divide mass at both sides and cancel out. And notice that the result is independent from mass. And we have that mu k times g is equal to the acceleration. And we know that for Earth, g is equal to 9.8 meters per second square. So 0 0.2 times 9.8 is equal to 1.96 meters per second square. And that's the acceleration that is going to decrease the momentum of our truck. Remember that this acceleration is in the negative direction because the initial velocity is going to the right, so this acceleration must be to the left in order to decrease the initial velocity. So now that we have the acceleration that this truck has in the negative direction, let's use one of the kinematic equations to figure out the stopping distance. So v final square is equal to v initial square plus 2 times the acceleration times delta x. Final velocity is 0 meters per second and initial velocity is 20 meters per second. So we have 20 to the second power plus 2 times negative 1.96 meters per second square times delta x. Let's subtract the 20 squared and when we divide minus 20 squared over negative 1.96 times 2, we get delta x. We use the calculator and we get that our stopping distance is around 102 meters. Delta x is the change in position, the final position minus initial position. So let's do a brief summary. We did the summation of the forces in the y direction, knowing that the net force is equal to zero. We did the summation of the forces in the x direction, knowing that there is an unbalanced force, that's friction, and it goes in the negative direction. 
Then, when we find the acceleration, we used a time-independent kinematic equation to find the stopping distance. That's delta x. Okay, guys, I hope that this video was useful. Remember to give me thumbs up and keep it going, guys. I'll see you in the next video.